Okay, so let's try integrating this question. Uh, let's integrate negative sine x over the square root of cos x. So you can first try to do this question by inspection. So for example, um, let's see here, if we just try to assume that maybe we can start with cos x, okay, um, and let's say if we uh, differentiate that, we would have negative sine x, which gives us our numerator, but that means we're, we don't have the denominator. So if we think about it a little bit more, if we take the square root of that, okay, which is equivalent to cos x to the power of one half, um, maybe we can see here that this still gives us a problem, but let's say if we had to differentiate this, so let's let that be f of x, um, and if you differentiate that, we would have uh, 1 half, keep this the same, and it becomes negative 1 half. The chain rule inside here uh, would make this negative sine x. Okay, and this isn't too bad. If you notice, this is actually kind of close to what we originally have. Okay, so if we just rewrite this, that would be 1 half um, it would be, we could put the negative from here, sorry, from there to the front, and the numerator would be sine x. And the denominator would be square root of cos x. Okay, so we're close to what we originally had, but we um, have a negative one half, and really we needed a negative one. So what we can do is maybe just manipulate this a little bit by multiplying this by 2, so we're kind of cheating here, so we get a negative 1, which means we would have to multiply everything by 2. So going back all the way up, we can start off with 2 square root cos x, or, which is this. Okay, so by inspection, this is what we would get. This would cancel to be negative uh, 1, because this time this is negative 1, sine x over square root of cos x. Okay, so we just did this by inspection, and uh, you can see that it works. Okay, so that's good. All right, but um, let's try to do this by substitution. So if we have, if we notice, we would have to let uh, something in the denominator here equal u so that we can get the derivative of the top. So what it would be is let u equal cos x, okay, which would then give us du by dx with negative sine x, okay, and now we have to uh, isolate for dx, so that's one way of doing this, so d is negative sine x by dx, okay, um, and then we would notice that, well, we don't have to necessarily isolate, we can just leave it right here, because if you notice, this right here is all of this, which means we can substitute, substitute du, which is right here, into this whole portion here. Okay, so that's du. So, and uh, our denominator would be the square root of u because here we have this, and that is u. Okay, so let's rewrite that all nicely together. So we have um, the integral of, ne well, negative sine x dx is now du, okay? And the denominator is square root of u. Okay, so if we set this, if we integrate this, we're going to have 1 over square root of u, du, which is equal to uh, u to the power of negative 1 half du. Okay, and integrating this, we will get, um, let's think about this, we have to go backwards here, so uh, 2 u to the power of 1 half plus c. Okay, let's see if that makes sense. So let's go backwards, just check. This time this is uh, 1, and then subtract 1, we get negative 1 half here, so that works out. Okay, and 
just remember that u is really square, uh, cos x. So we're going to have 2 cos x to the power of 1 half plus c. Okay, and that's really just the square root of cos x right here. So I'm running out of space, so I'm just going to do it like this. 2 uh, square root of cos x plus c, which matches our original answer. And remember, by inspection here, I should have also included a plus c, but I was just kind of doing this in informally. Okay, so that's that. Okay, so for this question here, part two, well, we just figured out from the part one that the integral of this is two square root cos x um, plus c, but because it's a definite integral now, we don't need that plus c. Okay, so let's just fast forward here to two um, square root cos x. Um, and now we're going from pi over two to zero. Okay, so we can just plug that in and see what that takes us. So this is two cos pi over two um, minus, so we plug the pi over two into here and then we have to plug the zero into here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so minus two cos zero. Okay, so we just have to remember what is cos uh, pi over two or cos 90 degrees and that is zero. So we have two times zero. Okay, and what is cos zero? Well, it's one. We have 2 times 1, so this gives us 0 minus 2, which is negative 2. Okay, so that works out nicely here. Um, but there's something else I wanted to just uh, show you. Let's say if we, um, this is a square root of cos x here, so it all works out nicely plugging in everything in. But you have to be a little careful here, because if you try to do this by substitution, and you never substitute this back in, you have to make sure you know how to alter this. Okay, so what I mean is, once we uh, integrated this, we had from the other, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, it was um, u in the bottom, square root of u over 1 um, du. Now when this happened here, this is what I want you to just make a note of. Um, is the boundary still 0 to pi over 2? You have to be careful here, because we're no longer working in terms of x, we're working in terms of u. So u is equal to cos x. So once we substitute uh, u into x, we have to realize that this is really um, u equals cos 0 for that lower boundary, which is equal to 1. And when u is equal to cos, I'm sorry, I should, I'm not writing this properly. But when we have cos pi over 2, we have 0. So this boundary from 0, this right here, changes, okay, to uh, 1, and then this top part changes to a 0, okay, so let's just maybe change colors here. So coming back down here, this is really equal to, um, once, we, once we integrate this, uh, so let's just rewrite this as 1, u, negative 1 half, du. What you have to be careful of here is, uh, Okay, so this is 2u, 1 half, okay, and now this is 0 and 1. So would we get the same answer here if we stuck with this? Well, let's check it out, okay, so um, we would get 2 times 0 to the power of 1 half, okay, minus 2 times 1 to the power of 1 half, and this is equal to, if you see 0, minus 2, which is negative 2, so it does match. Okay, so now that we can see that it matches both ways, uh, we just have to be careful. If you're going to integrate by substitution, you should show this here. You have to make the changes if you want to plug in the, these values into u. Otherwise, you have to substitute it back into the square root of cos x and use the original values. Um, just to make sure you're com completely uh, visualizing or understanding this, let's go to uh, a separate screen. And here... Wolfram um, Alpha is really good at showing this, so you can write it in from 0 to pi over 2. You can see the answer is uh, negative 2, like we got, and here it is. This is the definite integral, and here's the indefinite integral plus the constant. Um, also on Desmos, just to get a visualization, uh, here's the original curve, y is equal to negative sine x over square root of cos x, 
and from 0, which I've highlighted here with a blue line, to pi over 2, uh, is saying the area is negative 2. So that area that they're referring to is right here. So all that, and it's negative because it's below the x-axis. So that's that.